I'm going to use these three simple examples for EC or IC50 determination. Well, let's start with this one. Based on this information, I have to find what the halfway point is in the Y values. And I calculated that here, 49.9, that is between here and there. And then I have to find in the X values the corresponding to this one and one row further down, but corresponding to 49.9. So I need the trend function. The trend function is uh, based on a linear relationship between these two, and it finds, compared to that one, what the corresponding value between these two is, 0.95. In other words, in order to do all of this, I need two functions. I need a halfway function and I need an ECIC50 function. Let's create those in Visual Basic. Alt F11 opens Visual Basic. Alt F11. Make sure you have a new module there. Insert module. I did that already. So I have already module 1. And you type function. And then you come up with a word of your own. I came up with halfway. It has one argument that I need. I need the y values as a range. And I return a double. A double is the highest precision in Excel. Then I declare two internal variables. I need to know what the minimum value is in that range and what the maximum value is in that range. Once I know those two, then I can calculate the halfway part. So pmin is going to be based on the worksheet function from Excel that is called min. Min needs a range. The y's that we pass on for the halfway function. P max is the same, but this time the max function based on the range y's. And then I'm going to use the halfway name, the function, to find out what the halfway actually is. It is the max value minus the difference between P max and P min divided by 2. It's the halfway part. So let's let's test it. Let's go here and I'm going to call the function halfway. It's an official function now. It's a custom function, not an Excel function. Of course, in Excel, but not made by Excel. It's made by you. And I just tap halfway. All I have to do is which range do you want to use for that halfway calculation? And this is what we get, 49.9. You could have also done it with the fx function. And you will see that fx tells you I need to know the y's and that's all I need. And I will tell you what the halfway value is. Now the other one. More complicated. It is going to find based on that halfway. What are the corresponding values in that column. And then use trends to find the one corresponding with 49.9. That formula is a little more complicated. I declare a new function. I call it ECIC. I want three variables. X for the range of X values. Y for the range of Y values. Y50 for the mid value. And I return a variant. Because the trend function returns a variant. That's why I need a variant here. Then I need internal variables. Three of the integer type, two of the string type. I have to find out is my listing ascending or descending. So how do I check? I take the first cell in Y, in the range Y. If that is less than the second value in Y, in row 2, column 1. Then I set ASC variable to 1, otherwise to minus 1. It means it's descending. And then I'm going to determine what is the first cell in that row. I use the function match to find A 
y50 in the range y either ascending or descending and I do the same for the second one but then I add one more so it's the next one down remember we need the first corresponding one and then one more down we are going to store that in that address we are going to store in x1 x1 is of the string type and address is a string so I take I row 1 column 1 I row 2 column 1 take the address and connect those two addresses with a colon I do the same for y1 but now in the range y and not x and then finally I use the trend function from Excel worksheet function trend that says based on range x1 let's say a5 through a6 range y1 b5 through b6 and find the corresponding one for the halfway value that we had found with the previous function and return that to us and that's what the function does so I'm going to test it probably easier to understand what we are doing it says what are your x values a2 through a10 what are your y values b2 through b10 what is your halfway value and notice that it gives me minus 9.59 and that's the value I got if, if you want to study what happens in that function when we do this kind of things then we uh, we could put a breakpoint in the code I'm going back to visual basic and I put a breakpoint on the third line you cannot put a breakpoint on the dim line create a breakpoint in the gray area by cl clicking in front of that line and you can click that on or off now I have a breakpoint there that means when the function runs it will stop there and tell you what is going on so I'm going to do that let's say on uh, on this one here uh, in order to run it I click in the formula bar and enter again so it, it runs that formula and now I am in that row I want to see what happens to all my variables in the meantime so I open the locals window view locals the locals window tells me what is going on so far it tells me what X and Y is but that is hidden now because I didn't click on that plus but these internal variables are all still zero or empty strings I'm going to execute this yellow line by clicking F8 on your keyboard. F8. If I cells, I cells is 0, 0.993, Y cells is 1.02. If that is less than, then ASC will be 1, otherwise ASC will be minus 1. So then we have to find I row 1. I execute that line by pressing F8. I row is now 5. So I found that in row 5. So I row 2 should be 6. 5 plus 1 is 6. Then we are going to find the address in column of the X values. That is G6 through G7 because those uh, columns have a header so row 5 in that range is actually G6 through G7 and Y1 is H6 through H7 now we execute finally the trend function F8 and it will give me the function ECIC and I open that one and it says that's 0 0.9534 you see it's very precise because we are dealing with very precise calculations if I do F8 one more time it ends the function I take the breakpoint out 
I go back to Excel and I could test all my functions from now on and use them on any kind of situation. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There is much more to it, of course, if you want to know more about EC50 determination. I would recommend my book Excel for Scientists or my CD-ROM Excel 2013 for Scientists. VBA, I have a uh, CD-ROM with more than 1500 slides for 2007. That is basically the same as for 2013, but in, in the year 2014 that CD will be available too. You can, you can find all these tools at genesispc.com.